Ball on the head balance. When doing the ball on the head, there's a few different ways that you have to kind of prepare and understand what you're doing with it. The two main spots are the flat spot on the forehead, and this is more of kind of a spot balance where I'm just keeping it in that spot on my forehead. It's also kind of easier to think too on the temple. The temple, there's that concavity where it, it kind of cradles whatever ball that you have. The other type of balance, which is much more important for soccer or international football players or for jugglers, is the actual balance. So what I do is I put it right on the tip of my head right here. And when it comes to doing any sorts of balances, it's really important that I can still see the object. So as I'm doing the balance, I have to be able to see the object. In this case, the edge of the ball. So as I keep the real balance, I'm focusing on that center of gravity the ball has. That's also really important when bouncing the ball on the head is I wouldn't want to use the flat surface. To me, that makes it easier to kind of bounce out of control. I'm using that tip again and I'm keeping it like a, a vertical balance straight up like a normal staff balance might be on my head. So as I bounce the ball, I'm keeping it right in that center spot. And notice my eyes are also, I'm still watching it where I can kind of see part of that object and keep it balanced that whole time. For me, I just do little, little pops, little pops. And I kind of almost do it with my knees and my, my neck and my shoulder a little bit. So, and it may be in such a small way that at this point, you may not see my little action, but there is a little bit of a pop. So one of the things that people do wrong is they try to do it without seeing it. Without seeing it is almost impossible. Without seeing it is almost like a spot balance. So there's, like, there's also a little spot on top of the head that we can kind of find the balance there. So that one is more for like a solid ball and it's finding that balance and it's just a spot on the head that I try to keep the balance there. One last thing I wanted to try to give you for advice is that when you're picking an object or a soccer ball to, to do these types of balances, I really recommend finding a, a ball where the valve is pushed inside the, the ball itself. So if you, if you can see here, the valve is almost undetectable. So as I'm bouncing it, as I'm doing it, I don't feel that valve. Whereas if I have a soccer ball like this, the valve is right there. And as I'm bouncing it, as I'm moving it around, it distorts the portion of the ball. So it's real important to try to find an object that works really well. One other piece of advice as I'm thinking of it is I do not have these balls fully inflated. I keep them a little bit deflated so that it makes it a little bit more of a give and it gives me a little bit more control. When it's really solid and really inflated like it should have been for uh, an actual game, it makes it really impactful. It, it really kind of hurts the head over time and it's really strong in that. So there's a, there's a balance. You don't want it too squishy, but you want it uh, solid enough that it can keep its form. So when you're doing some of the, the balances, where it's the temple or the forehead, it has to have that solid form. Too much give, it's just gonna be too pliable. So I hope some of these advices help for being able to do a head balance in the different spots or a head bounce. And like I said, that's, that's kind of my, my favorite spot. For those of you that are like soccer players, then it's real kind of easy to, to do the, the shoulder hits, which are, let's do a side view so you can see the position of the ball on the head. For the forehead balance, nice and flat, finding that spot on the forehead where it just kind of has a pocket and it keeps it there. For the tip balance, pushing it up on the tip, making sure I keep my eyes on it and can even bring it a little bit farther back so it's a little bit easier to see. And if I wanted to combine and do another trick with that, 
Uh, both of these work really well. And then the temple. And maybe a little bit of bounce juggling. So when I stop it too, one of the tricks for stopping the ball like I just did is I, I kind of just stop my body from moving and I let the ball finish bouncing. So I don't really cradle it too much. It's more of just keeping that ball from bouncing anymore. So I just kind of let it bop, bop, or <laughs> it's like bop, 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 bop. And I let it kind of stall on that, that tip. And I find that's a lot easier to kind of hold it. Very similar to doing the object balance. So if I have a staff and I have that staff balanced, that when I do the ball, very similar, I'm just kind of keeping it right there and I'm letting it finish the, the bounce to keep it going that way. A uh, bit of insight as a bonus to do any sort of balance with a staff, I'm looking at the top of the object. The top of the object is where I can correct the balance the quickest and it's where the body naturally understands the balance the most.